I'm Matt. I'm Carrie. We are the Stagmer Brothers of Baltimore Knife and Sword. We're going to be building some of your favorite weapons, and some weapons that you've never seen before. This is Man at Arms, Reforged. In this episode, we're finally going to make Pyramid Head's knife from Silent Hill. Now there are a couple different variants of this knife in the games and in the movies. We're gonna make the one that looks like a giant Rambo knife. It's gonna be a little more flashy. We're gonna show a little more skill in that. So we're gonna go ahead and get to making that. Silent Hill takes place over a coal mine. So we thought it would be a nice tie-in to make our blade out of some train track to kind of mimic that mine shaft operation and uh, give us enough material to make this giant blade out of. So for Pyramid Head's knife, we took the top of the train track the track part of it and cut her off the bottom. I did a little bit of pre-forging on it. I have to be wearing a lot of protective gear because this amount of heat radiates onto the blacksmith resulting in the possibility of injuries and burns especially on the arms. It will take me a full day to widen it and extend it resulting in a pre-form of the knife. The first step Ilya is doing is drawing out the point the shape of this knife blade has something called a clip point, much like a buoy knife. It's just shaping that point, and then he'll draw out the rest of the stock to lengthen with. Obviously, every day we can't practice forging these giant blades, but Ilya does a lot of practice on normal size blades. It allows you to get the process down. So when we go to make these giant blades, we have a really good idea where we're going and we're doing a pretty good job. We'll get everything refined as we go and we're just gonna keep making this thing bigger and bigger and wider as we can and hopefully be done soon. <laughs> Because of the size and the weight of the blade, I needed Matt to assist me. One major problem is that as you're forging it, the weight of the blade itself forces it to droop over the dies. That creates not only a dangerous situation, but interferes a lot with the forming. Second thing is, in order to use the fullering dies in the power hammer, I need a person to assist me on the other side, stabilizing the piece. The fullering dies work by pinching metal. Normally, the fuller is pinched into the piece. However, if you use a series of consecutive fullers, each one deeper than the next one, and each one infinitesimally close to the previous one, you produce a bevel. All right, now that we got a lot of the blade forging done, what we need to do is I'm gonna go to the chop saw, cut off the handle we have welded on, and then we're gonna be able to hold it by the tip and do some of the forging down by the tang and the shoulder area. between the shoulder of the blade and the edge of the blade. Now we're gonna go to the very edge of our dies on the power hammer and start pulling out that plunge grind look to the edge. We now have the blade pretty much forged to shape. We just have to scoot that point over a little bit. I'm gonna do this by heating up that point specifically and slamming it on the anvil and when I'm done, it'll have a little bit of crinkle. Ilya will hit it with a sledgehammer. We'll go back, repeat the process a couple times until we get the material where we want it. Now that this blade is to form, we notice that the tang needs to be a little bit farther towards the back. I'm gonna hold the blade while Matt and Ilya strike and push it down to where it belongs. The last few heats that we're gonna do on this massive blade before grinding is getting it nice, true, and flat. We're gonna use a flatter. I'm gonna direct Ilya where to strike to get any bumps or lumps that could be left in both the bevel and the flat of the blade. Boom! 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 All right, the guy's got the blade here rough forged out, and I'm gonna go ahead and use our hand plasma torch and cut the clip point off for and make it a little easier on the grinding.
Here I carefully remove some material from the edge and the spine to create the desired profile before edging. All right, we have our final shaping done on the profile of the blade. It's time to start edge grinding. In the game, the edge has a really narrow plunge grind on it. We're gonna do a little more realistic edge on this great knife, give it a better chance to cut things well in the demo. So I'm gonna start on our 12 inch wheel here and just do a hollow grind on the edge. It's gonna take me a little time, but eventually it's gonna pay off. I've tackled some pretty big blades on man at arms, so you know that I can do it. But sometimes, size really does matter. So I called in Bill to help me out on this. He's gonna hold one edge as I grind the other. Right, now that Bill and I have most of our edges roughed in, I figured now was a good time to take a break and start laying out where our back serrations and our fullers are gonna go. Now the back serrations and the fuller both start at the Ricasso area and work their way up the blade. I counted in most of the designs about nine serrations and the fuller goes all the way almost to the false edge. If you ask 10 different blacksmiths or bladesmiths how to put a fuller in a blade, they're probably gonna give you 10 different answers. In this case, I use a two inch wheel and just freehand it to shape. Now that my fuller's ground in, it's time to start on the serrations. Normally, I would just grind these in, but I gotta be honest, I'm pretty tired after all this grinding, so I'm gonna use the hand plasma, rough in my notches, and then move to the grinder to true everything up. Now that I've roughed in my notches on the back of the blade, I'm gonna go ahead and throw them up with a hand sander. The difference between hand grinding and using the sanders like I usually do is I prefer to move my work to the wheel. In this case, I'm moving the wheel to the work. It's a little different, you gotta think about things before you get going, but it's gonna save me some energy and I'm gonna go ahead and get at it. On the Silent Hill blade, we've got a really big knife. Kind of has a bolster more than a guard. Just kind of a big block of steel that goes on there. So we've got to make a pretty big slot in this. We're going to put it on the milling machine, slot where it goes all the way through for the tang, and then slot a shoulder that the rest of the blade can lock into to give it some strength. Okay, so once again, we're breaking out the old hobo furnace of doom for this heat treat. Basically what this is is a couple electric kiln rings with a KOO lined barrel. We're firing it with a giant weed burner powered off of propane. It gets plenty hot. It's gonna heat up to about 1550 degrees in about 10 minutes. Our goal for this heat treat is just to get the edge heat treated. So we're gonna heat that up, quench it horizontally, and let it sit there and burn out for a while because it's gonna flame big and it's gonna flame for a long time. Well, that's about the edge quench from hell right there. <laughs> this part was not quenched. At this point, the heat that this thick area has retained will start creeping back on our edge and kind of self-temper. We're still gonna play it safe. We'll temper it again, but that's the whole idea about doing a big thick blade like this. We noticed that this wicked blade always is shown with a lot of battle damage scars. Big scrapes on the side of the blade. So Ilya uses an angle grinder to grind these in, gives us the look we're looking for, and now we're ready to finish it up. This blade has an obvious rough forge finish in the game. So we're just gonna give it some highlights and some flash on both the surface, the back serrations, and the edge. We're now ready to begin the handle construction. What we're gonna do is we got our guard here, our steel bolster and what is going to work as our steel pommel aka our counterbalance for this giant blade not going to work what we're going to do is we're going to do a purple heart handle 
I'm gonna lay the piece of purple art here, trace the tang, cut two identical pieces out, make a sandwich, glue it up, pin it, form it, and then we'll have our handle. Purple Heart is called Purple Heart because it's purple. It's a very dense, heavy wood. I don't care if you don't like it, it's my favorite wood. Carrie's made me stuff since I was a little kid for my birthday and Christmas. He always made sure it was out of Purple Heart. Just think it's really nice wood and it's gonna work very well as a handle for this. With the Purple Heart already fitted to the tang, Matt fills it with epoxy and clamps everything in place until it dries. <clears throat> Super happy with this sword. Turned out awesome, the forging was great, the grinding was a challenge. I think you guys are starting to really just not like me, requesting all these giant blades knowing I have to be the one that grinds them. Pyramid Head's one of the most iconic faceless villains in any video game ever. I think we did him justice. Just excited to get to swing this thing. Click here to subscribe or click here to watch more episodes. Thanks for watching Man at Arms Reforged. We need to know what you want the guys to build, so tell us in the comments below what weapons you want to see next.